Okay, so um, so I know you have a crew, right? And you know, you know, some some people starting off being an entrepreneur, this and that. You know, you usually work by yourself. You you go through a struggle. You take on like all these jobs. It's really difficult. Um, how did you grow into getting the the employees you have now? Uh, I had I had a good friend. Uh, you know, your your significant other, your spouse is a great support support system. That's a good start. Um, and I'm just I I just I don't know I I my other employee Kelso he's been with me since day one he's helped me uh, that's my brother so he's mm. helped me from the very beginning I have my other my little brother who works with me too um, mm. I've had it, it's more about trusting that's that's my problem I know I need to gain more employees I I really do it's just right. a matter of trusting another person I did have another person who wasn't family who was part of the team um, and he did really well um, and he's still with us so it, it's just more about mm -hmm. me I need to learn to let go and trust that's what I was gonna say like I, I, I you know do a lot of research on a lot of millionaires and how they came from nothing and one of the biggest issues is uh, letting go you know and, and allowing people to do their job and he, even myself I still to this day do a million jobs myself but um you know the the main thing is to let go and then to have somebody that's really going to be consistent with you uh, yeah. that's not going to stray yeah my guy kelso that's my that's my a1 so i've been working with him very closely this year because i do plan to expand <laughs> um and so i've been training him having him work with me side by side so that i can let him take over while i can start another project and so far that's been pretty successful. So now I'm 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 here at home while you know he's over there at our food truck taking yeah. care of business. So And it's hard, it's hard, it's hard to let go and just say, go ahead. But you know, uh to that's the biggest part of growth though. You'll never grow unless you could put people in their positions and allow them to run it, you know. Right. Um because I could see uh trap saws going far, further than what it is now. I know it's it's pretty big right now, but you know, I, I, I could see it, you know, expanding to different locations and, you know, because it's doing good. Um, I know at one point you were talking about changing the name. Yeah. So I plan to rebrand to it's still going to be Trap Sauce, um, but instead of Trap Sauce Micheladas, it's going to be Trap Sauce Treats. Because now that I have my food truck, I offer more than just Micheladas. I, I have your typical Mexican like concession snacks, except... Mm -hmm they're not generic store-bought tahine or store-bought chamoy. Like I'm actually handcrafting. I use chili, chiles from Monterrey. Um, so everything is, it, it's what people are used to, but I add that little extra spice to it. So, um, Have you ever thought of having any bottling companies do your stuff and, and all that? Like, like yeah, going, going I could find the right person. If I could find the right connection to help me with that, absolutely. Because me doing it on my own, I've spent countless of hours calling different companies from all over the United States and they don't want to accept me or they're not accepting clients or I've even like, it's it was a pain, so. And then like for me to do the, the nutritional analysis, like of course you can generate that on your own, but I actually want it to be legit. I want everything to be FDA approved. Right. So, yeah, I, w I really do want to take my time and do things the right way with that. So I don't want a, a disaster to happen. So that's why yeah. I just sell locally. Occasionally, I'll, I'll do shipping, but it's um, I have ice packs and everything like that. And um, yeah, disclaimers. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about because um, I know you're you're all over the place. You're, you're, you're doing events. You're doing well, are, are you still doing events? Yes, yes. Uh, on the weekends, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's talk about losses. You know, because everybody wants to do business, right? And some people don't understand the loss that you might take by taking on, you know, a small business. You know what I mean? Like, uh, talk a little bit about that, like like the struggles that, that you've had to go through with the business. Man, where do I even begin? So... I can start with, with, it's in the name itself, TRAP stands for Take Risk and Prosper. And right. I've taken many, many risks, a lot of risky moves, some that were very beneficial. I mean, well, actually, all of them, now that I think of it, like, 
-hmm. even the ones that have failed or didn't go as planned I learned from it and I grew for example um going to an event that I was promised thousands of attendees I paid hundreds and hundreds of dollars to be there um I lost out on five thousand dollars and mm -hmm. I only made two sales that day and the parking lot was empty and it was a disaster. It really, it really held me back. I wasn't able to pay my employees. Um, I had to throw a lot of product away. That was that. Yeah, that was, that's wow. when I learned, okay, I can't just sign up to any gig. Like I need to be very, I'm very picky and choosy where I go, where my brand is. I can't just associate my brand with everyone and anyone. And I know that might sound pompous or conceited but I mean I I have a quality brand and I want it to be associated with good quality events and people and artists um, I, I work a lot with um, artists um, the hip-hop artists mm -hmm. here in Houston and so I don't want to just be doing everything every gig with anybody so right. yeah that's an example is um, that I learned um, also what else man there's a lot of this this whole year alone was um you know I, it was especially financially mm -hmm. um you know we had the inflation i i wasn't able to get a lot of the products that i normally would at the same cost so i had to raise my prices which mm -hmm. means you know i had to i had to lose some customers that were like oh you used to do this a month ago for this price and now you're doing it. oh she's trying to jip us and it's like no like I'm, i gotta keep up with the demand but i also gotta keep up with the the prices of inflation the gasoline that goes into my generator that goes to my truck that hauls my trailer storage fees the like there's so much that goes into um i'm not trying to jip people i'm just trying mm -hmm. to keep my business open and running so no, yeah, a lot of people don't know the behind the scenes. Like, uh, you know, it's you know, I'm glad you brought that up because my mom went and bought a, a food trailer, right? And you know, she sees everybody doing the food truck stuff, and I'm like, you don't know what that consists of. You're gonna. <laughs> I you didn't. Know, I didn't either. Up. I went into the game thinking it was gonna be so easy and people are gonna be standing in lines, and it was it was the opposite. I had to really like get gritty with it and um yeah there's a lot to owning a food truck i had i was not prepared for so my mom's trailer has been sitting in the front yard for two years now. <gasps> oh my gosh <laughs> she hasn't um figured it out i don't know there's certain you know you know you know you know how the permits go right oh yeah <laughs> and then rebuilding stuff and doing this and the other so you know she ends up, and I'm like, you still ain't ready for it, even if you get it running, because you don't understand that you got to shop, you you got to you got to prep, you got to uh, yes. serve, you got to clean up afterwards. You got you know, it's a lot of stuff yeah. that people don't understand.